hero. Well, hello, movie fans, comic book fans, and lovers of pure epicness. We are now here for the sixth installment in the DCEU for DC Comics. Now, how did this film stand out? Is it better than Wonder Woman? Is it better than Justice League? Is it better than Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice? I surely hope so. But let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Aquaman. I really do appreciate it. Now, if you know me, you know that comic book movies are my most favorite movies of all time. They're my most anticipated. I can't wait to the theater to get to see them. When it comes to Aquaman, um, my expectations were pretty high, especially with that last trailer. I mean, the five minute extended trailer that they released a number of months ago, that was cool. That was great. It was epic. I loved it. But that final trailer, it just did something for me. I would sometimes, when I didn't have anything to watch, just queue it up and watch it a few times in a row because it was just that good. So I was expecting a good amount with this, um, especially with it being directed by James Wan. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, I've been following him for the longest time when he did Saw, he did Insidious. Of course, he did Conjuring 1 and 2. Um, he also did, uh, in, I, I said Insidious. Uh, he also did Fast 7. And I really wasn't a fan of that film, but, you know, that had a number of random circumstances that, you know, made it kind of difficult to make that film. But he also did uh, Dead Silence um, and uh, Death Sentence with Kevin Bacon. And, you know, one of those is a horror with the ventriloquist dummies. The other one is kind of like uh, a revenge vigilante plot with Kevin Bacon. I mean, the guy's filmography is fantastic. So I knew that, um, you know, he was in, well, the film was in good hands. And people kind of, you know, trashing on DC, saying that their movies are horrible, they can't keep up with Marvel and things like that, and that their whole film comic book franchise is dead. I don't think so, especially uh, with this movie right here, Aquaman. Now, I am a fan of the character. Um, I have this Blu-ray right here, one of their animated movies, uh, Justice League Throne of Atlantis. However, this film right here is loosely based on Jeff John's uh, 2011 11 comic. And this film right here, it's okay. It's not one It's not one of the better uh, DCE or DC animated films. I have like 30 of them and, you know, I wouldn't say that was in the top 10, but it is entertaining. So um, this film right here, Aquaman... It, to be honest with you, it, it's a mixed bag for me. Uh, it's not a mixed bag between the bad and the good because there's really not anything bad in this film. I, I can't sit there and say that when I was watching, I was like, oh, that sequence didn't work out right there. I didn't like it a lot. But this is a mixed bag between, you know, the good, the, the great and the oh, OK, that could have been a little bit better. But what do I mean by that? Well, for starters, the very intro of the film, I was smiling ear to ear, literally like this for a good 10 minutes. I, I actually said to myself, like, dang, Brennan, how long you been smiling? Like, I don't, you're going to hurt your face or whatever. You know, just relax. We're at the very beginning of the movie. But I like the way they set up everything. I like the tone. I like to where they were explaining story, but at the same time, not going down in some sequential order of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I mean, the audience, not the audience, but the film treated the audience like they were mature adults and was able to comprehend what was going on without it being you know force fed you know down our throats so i really did like that um there is a narration by aquaman jason Moore, arthur carey at the very beginning of the film just setting things up and i was loving every bit of it now the next thing that i like you know is the sequence uh where he's a child um underwater not underwater but at the field trip or whatever at the aquarium and you know he's getting bullied i love that sequence so you know the very beginning of the film this thing did feel promising but then it starts to dip a little bit when we finally meet aquaman you know of course he made just like a great intro but his you know when it came to the dialogue and things like that it came off a little uh, a little corny to me now his presence on screen was great i mean he did look badass he did look like somebody that you don't 
want to double cross that you don't want to piss off or he may just throw you out of a window or into a steel door so you know he fits within the role very very well he did that in Aquaman and he did a great job here but I don't know for some of the decisions they made were kind of the dialogue and things like that early on in the film especially when this intro it did come across a little corny to me and that is one of my first gripes in the film is when it comes to the dialogue or I'll just say the exposition you know period so this film it has to explain a lot because you know you have this underground uh, world of um of Atlantis and then you also have to transition back and forth on land and there is a lot of explanations that you know has to take place to get the point across but the execution there was it just didn't flow it wasn't smooth it felt forced it just felt like okay we're done with this scene right here and now it's just another exposition scene and the characters just talk talk talking and they were just kind of bland to me and there were just really nothing to it and I just kind of said to myself like man this film should be called Aqu Aquaman explainer version because usually I don't I don't remember the I, I, excuse me I don't know the exact term for this uh, but usually when a film has to explain a lot and they have to go through the expositions they have a character in the film that is completely new to the world and as you have a vet in that scene explaining it to the new character we the audience members are experiencing this new world through the character in the film that hasn't seen this before or whatever I mean it's kind of like you know we're a team or whatever they didn't necessarily have a character like that in this film you could say that it was Aquaman but at the same time there was a left uh, there was a lot left on the cutting room floor as far as, you know, great dialogue or exposition uh, because we had Aquaman and Justice League or whatever. So they kind of just skipped over that. And, you know, it, it was OK, but, you know, I, I, I it, they could have stepped it up just a little bit. It, it was kind of bland and, you know, it kind of clocked me out. Now, something that I did find very interesting at the very beginning of the film and the rest throughout is the fighting choreography. They did that tough. I mean, they knocked it out of the park. Um, it was early on. I mean, you as soon as you see the first fight, you know you're in for a treat, especially uh, with um, Nicole Kidman uh, playing uh, Queen Atlanta. She can fight. She can box. She can handle her own. And I saw this in it was it, it was they say it was IMAX, but it really wasn't an IMAX theater. It was I, I call that LIMAX because the ratio uh, wasn't the full 70. It didn't the ratio wasn't right. It didn't have the full 70 uh, millimeter screen, but the sound in that theater was popping. I mean, the bass, I could feel it. I can I can hear every punch, every kick, every time someone stomped their foot on the ground. You can feel it. I mean, it was very, very impactful and they did that very, very well. Something else that I loved in this film was the costumes especially with black uh with black manta now his uh the guy that plays black manta i don't know how to pronounce his name but um he was one of my favorite in the whole entire film uh he had a great presence uh his name is pronounced yaye abdul mateen the second if if i'm correct there with pronouncing his name and i like everything about his character um, you know, what motivated him, whether, it, you know, it was a good motivation or bad motivation. I think the film did a great job there. But when he was in his pirate uniform, when he was in his black manta uniform, I, I was just like, I, I said to myself, like, I cannot wait to buy this on 4K just so I can see the crisp details in his suit. Because, I mean, this is some of the best uh, costume designs that I've seen all year. Kind of competing uh, with Black Panther. And not just with him as Black Panther, but the other Atlanteans. When they're up on, uh, on land, uh, on dry land... That sequence where it's like one take and you can see the robotic, act, I'm going to say Aquian, uh, Atlantean armor. It, it looked, it, it was nice. It was crisp. It was colorful. I, I loved it all. It popped even more when they were doing all their fighting and had all the choreography and things like that. So, you know, that was great. That was fantastic. As far as the cast is, is concerned, of course, I love Jason Momoa um, as uh, Aquaman. I also like Willem Dafoe as Volko. Some of the other characters, oh, and Nicole Kidman is Atlanta. She did great too. But some of the other characters just didn't do it for me as much. Like, uh, I don't know why they wanted to uh, hire Dolph Lundgren as King Nearest in this film. I don't, you know, King, not King, but Patrick Wilson, who plays King Orm or Ocean Master, he's worked with James Wan a number of times in the past and pretty much all his films. Uh, the Conjuring and, you know, uh, Insidious and things like that. And he did a great job in there. And also Patrick Wilson did a great job in the film Watchmen as the Night Owl character as one of those retired superheroes. 
But for some reason in this film, I wasn't buying him as Ocean Master. I'm not saying that his acting was bad or anything like that. You know, it just, he has somewhat of a decent presence on film. You know, he had the physicality there. But for some reason, I just wasn't connecting with him as the villain. I mean, and he, he wasn't the greatest villain either. I mean, his mo I understand his motivation. He wants to, um, you know, take war on the surface world because they're polluting the oceans. But, I mean, that that was blatantly obvious. There, there, there was no plot point that needed to be expressed in this film to get that point across. I mean, it was just something we already know. A lot of people just living in the real world right now don't like the ocean being polluted. And so there were just really no true event. There there was nothing that happened to him that just sent him over the edge. It's like, ah, I'm so angry with the surface world. I mean, it was just, I, I don't know, some foregone conclusion that you just have to know. And I just wanted a little bit more from that. As far as Amber Heard is Mira, um, she was fine too. It, it was nothing great about her performance. It was nothing great about anyone's performance in this movie. The acting was fine. Um, some, you know, like I said, Nicole Kidman, Willem Dafoe, Jason Moore, they were great. But uh, everybody else, it was just like, okay, you guys are just talking. Yeah, I don't even think you mem memorize your lines sometimes. It just seems like you're, you know, you're reading. Um, as far as Atlantis is concerned, um, it was great. But at the same time, I wasn't impressed. Uh, I do want to give James Gunn, not James Gunn, uh, James Wan credit because I know that this film is extremely difficult to make. I couldn't do it, so I don't want to just crap all over him like, oh, yeah, it wasn't good. It should have did this. It should have did that. He didn't cross this T over here. No, I'm not trying to be an a-hole or sound obnoxious. I know this is very difficult to do. But at the same time, I cannot say that when they finally dive into Atlanta and everything lights up like it did in the trailer, so I was like, whoa, you know, this is amazing. You know what I'm saying? I did that with Avatar in 2009, uh, but I did not do that with... Um, with Atlantis here in this movie. It was still cool and I liked the makeup of it and I liked the story behind it and you know how everything came into place and how everything was organized and all that good stuff. But it just did not blow me away. It may blow you away. But something great about another great thing about this film um is just like the character designs and the CGI uh when they are are above water and sometimes below. Uh with me being specific, let me just talk about the trench monsters. When they were on screen, the D detail there was some of the best I've ever seen. I mean, it was, you know, like on point. It was scary a little bit. You know, the I was like, okay, I don't, the creatures look just so ugly that you don't even want to look at them because you feel like you're going to get infected. And there was one scene in the trailers where there was like a big giant red light uh, with water waves and they're going down in the red light and it's a bunch of fish and monsters going around. Things like that just really stood out to me in this film. And, you know, it was great. There was just another moment that, you know, of a, a, a number of moments where I was just smiling ear to ear like that. So, you know, this is kind of what I'm saying when I'm saying this between like a mixed bag because let's talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack at times, the score was great. It was epic. It was the right mu music to set the tone of what was, what was going on. But then at the same time, the, the choice of music was horrible. You know, when they're bouncing back and forth between like a superhero, somewhat origin film into like an uh, extra uh, adventure that the heroes are going on. Like this is Indiana Jones or the Goonies or something like that. When they were doing their adventure things, I was not feeling the mu music. It was just kind of corny to me. And I was like, man, who chose this song choice? You know, I'm not really I'm not really feeling this right here another great thing about this the film was funny i did laugh a number of times and the last sort of graph i'm gonna just talk about is some of the action in the trailers were more impactful in the trailers than they were in the movies uh i was a little annoyed by that but i did get over it but then again you know i love my superhero landings i love all my poses and things like that especially when it has to do with martial arts and they had that all throughout this film i mean when aquaman you know when he was getting into his groove or whatever and then fighting and doing all his poses i was loving it i think at one time i kind of did like a little move right here just because i was in the mood or whatever and that's just because it was just a great sequence in the movie or whatever i talked about the fighting as well and i liked that as well in the training 
sequences with Willem Dafoe as Volko. You know, that was great. I wanted a little bit more, but it was choreographed very, very well. And I also just wanted to give James Wan some credit with the set. The set design was great. I mean, there were some times, of course, they used a ton of CGI on this film, but there was other times when I was like, man, this is real. I mean, you know it's a set. They're not building ancient ships and things in Atlantis and where people can physically fight and things like that. But the sets grounded the film and just made it more greedy, especially when they're doing all these fighting and things like that. Some of this, the, the power scaling was off a little bit. I kind of said to myself at one point, okay, why is Aquaman losing to this one person, but somebody else over here that's supposed to be weaker than Aquaman is able to defeat three of the people that only one was able to defeat Aquaman? That Maybe I registered it wrong or comprehended it wrong, but that you know that is something that kind of stood out to me. But in the end, guys, when Aquaman, you see it in the trailer, where Aquaman is filing this Aquaman costume and he gets the, the golden trident and he's stomping it down at that point right there it was just nothing but you know glorious cinematic masterpiece epicness you know to me at that point on from the end of the film when he finally became the true Aquaman with all the powers I was loving it he was powerful it was just badass when he was in the middle of the war in the middle of the ocean flying around swimming around punching things and swimming real fast like a dolphin and all this good just good stuff using his powers it was nice it was epic I loved all the sea creatures I loved the giant monsters and things like that. I mean, you know, it, it was great. It, it was great. I I, I, I told her I said I wasn't going to talk about him the great, but I just thought about it. Early on in the film, um, the transition between them going on land and in, in the, on, excuse me, going on land and into the ocean back and forth and on land between Atlantis, that was a little jarring. But then again, at the very end of the film, when Aquaman is doing his thing, it's freaking fantastic. I loved it. Um, I know it seemed like I complained a lot in this film, but guys, it really is a great film. I was able to nitpick it a lot. I didn't do that intentionally. I'm just trying to be honest with you. I did enjoy the film a lot. Um, if you are interested in seeing it, don't let me deter you away. Still go to see the film. If you had no interest in seeing this period before you saw this video, you heard anybody else talk about it, talk about it. It may not be for you. Um, but it is something I really did enjoy as I still enjoyed, uh, Wonder Woman and Justice League slightly above, well, not slightly, but more than this one, but I definitely enjoyed it more than, uh, Batman v Superman, Donna of Justice and Justice League. And uh, not Justice League, uh, Suicide Squad. Um, as far as Man of Steel is concerned, I don't know. I have to think about that. But if I had to rate Aquaman out of a 1 out of 10, and this is really hard, but I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Yes, a 7.5 out of 10. When I see it again, I may bump that up to an 8, but right now it's just a 7.5. But guys, that is just my opinion for Aquaman. Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning into my opinion slash review for Aquaman. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.